When we create a new core data entity, Xcode automatically generates a managed object class we can use in our code. We can then use a Swift UI fetch request to pull data into our UI. But as you've seen, it's quite painful. We've got optionals everywhere, which requires scattering nil coalescing around your code just to make it build. There are two ways around this. One is fast and easy, but likely to end up being problematic. And one is a lot slower, but will work better in the long term. First, let's make an entity to work with in our code here. In your data model, make a new entity here and rename it to be movie. Double click, movie. And then we'll add some attributes. We'll add one here called the title, movie title, that'll be a string. Then we'll have another one called director. That'll be a string. There we go. And one called year. And make that an integer 16. Don't leave the model editor yet because while we're here, I want to go across the view menu over here, then look for inspectors and you'll see a data model inspector down here. Press that one now. And this box in the right will appear full of interesting options to control our information. Now, when you can select the attributes, you see options of the attributes, but I want you to choose the entity itself, movie. We're now seeing the options to control the way movies are used in core data. In particular, I'd like to look at the way it says code gen. This is uh, the way Xcode generates code, code gen, for the model that we have here, the movie entity. And you see it's set to by default to be class definition. I'd like to change that to be manual slash none, which gives us full control over how that core data class is made. So with that change, Xcode is now no longer generating a movie class for us to use in code. So we can't use it in code unless we actually make the class with some real Swift code. To do that, go to the editor menu up here and then choose Create NS Managed Object Subclass. Make sure your uh, project here is checked, your model is checked, then press Next, and then check Movie, and then press Next, and then press Create here, uh, ideally inside the group like this, get more organized, get it in here, there we go. And these new files appear. <clears throat> So what we've done is we've asked Xcode to convert its generated code, what it would have done for us anyway, into actual Swift files we can see and change. But keep in mind, if you change these files and then regenerate that set we did a minute ago, the same object subclass again, your changes will be lost. They'll be thrown away. So change these very, very carefully. Um, you'll see two files made for us here. The class is here and properties here. And inside properties, you'll see a bunch of things, and particularly these three lines of code here, are title, director, and year. And you'll see now, this is where our optionality problem comes from. It makes title and director both optional. It doesn't make year optional. It'll assume a default value for us of that, but title and director are optional. And also notice, NS managed is here, at NS managed. And I know it looks like a property wrapper. It's not a property wrapper. This stuff predates property wrappers by a long, long way. This is much, much older. Instead, this reveals a little bit of how core data works internally. Rather than these three values here actually existing as properties on the class, they're really just there to read and write from a dictionary that core data will use behind the scenes to store its information. Little wrappers around that effectively. And uh, what this means is, uh, when we read or write title or director or year, anything NS managed, core data basically catches that request. Give me title. No, 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 no. I'll intercede that and handles it internally in its magical core data ways. It is far from a simple Swift string. Now you might think, you know, I don't want optionals here. I'm going to go ahead and just like delete the optionals. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> you can totally do that. That will work, right? That will absolutely work. You can make movie objects with the same code as before, uh, fetch request, yada, 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 it all works great. And have no optionality here. And it will still work fine. However, you might 
notice something strange, which is that uh, even though our properties aren't optional anymore, we're saying must be a title, must be a director, must be a year, you'll find it's still possible to make a movie instance without those values. And that ought to be impossible. They are not optional, they must have values all the time, but we can still create one without values being there. And again, it's just a little bit of how NS Managed works. It's kind of the magic leaking out from Coreta a little bit. These are not real properties. They're not really there. As a result, NS Managed is letting us do things that shouldn't be possible. That should, that's just not allowed to work, bluntly. The fact that it does work is neat. You can hack away at that and good luck to you. And I think for small projects and for learner projects, you know, fill your boots, go for it. But there's a deeper problem, which is that core data is lazy. And lazy in a good way, not lazy in a bad way. Uh, you know, Swift has a lazy keyword built in for doing lazy loading of data. Don't use this until I actually have to use it for the first time and then do the real work of creating it. That's what it's there for. Core data does exactly the same thing. It understands, um, I yeah, I've totally got a title and a director in a year. It's absolutely 100% there, promise. And it isn't really. When you ask for it, then it'll be loaded. So it'll lazy load as much as it can. And this is really, really helpful for things like if you have a whole school of data and a school has many classrooms and a classroom's got many students, if you load the whole school at once, you might have to load 50 classrooms and a thousand students, depending on the size of your school. That's a lot of information being loaded for one school. So core will say, yeah, I've got classrooms. Trust me, it's totally there. It's not there. You read a classroom, then it finally loads a classroom, and you read a student, it finally loads a student, but does so lazily, on demand, as it needed. And it calls these things faults, uh, in a sense of like a, uh, a fault line, like a line between where something exists and something that's really just a placeholder a fault. Anyway, we don't have to do any special work to handle these faults, because as soon as we try and read students, or title, or classrooms, whatever it's trying to read, as soon as we try and read it, Cordis will transparently fetch those for us. It'll just do it silently. There's another benefit of the NS Manage keyword right here. It'll do lots of work for us. However, if we start futzing around with the types of core data's properties, we get a risk of exposing that sort of magical underbelly a little bit. And this thing specifically and intentionally does not work the way the rest of Swift does. The rest of Swift works differently to this intentionally. If we try and circumvent that to make our life easier, we're just inviting problems into our code. And so, you know, value just said definitely won't be nil, might suddenly be nil at any point in the future. So just don't do it, it's not really worth the risk. Instead, a better option, I would say, is to add computed properties around your values. They will read the optional values out there while also storing your nil coalescing in one place. For example, we have title here, on our movie, um, you could say, I want to have uh, a uh, public var wrapped title string. And it return title or nil coalescing down to unknown title. And so the whole rest of your code will read wrap title everywhere it wants to without having to worry about nil coalescing because it's all done in one central place. So the whole rest of code isn't going to worry about the way core data handles optionality. That's done for you. But if you want to make changes to the default values, you can do so in one single file. 